night of blessings you are about to receive of the blessing of the Lord in the land of the living as you are participating in this last session of the Cell Ministry Week Cell Leaders Conference of 2023, which marks the end of all the ministry events in the entire year of 2023, the year of extravagant change. Will you celebrate Jesus wherever you are and be seated? Let us pray as we begin today's session. Father Lord, who art in heaven, we thank you and we praise your holy name for such a glorious time you have bestowed upon us to be here. We love you, O Lord, and we adore you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here on the third day to portray your goodness. Thank you for teaching us the principles to succeed as cell leaders. We love you, O Lord. We adore you. We give you all the glory, the adoration, and thanksgiving in Jesus Christ's name. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. May be seated wherever you are. Well, um, you are welcome to the Soul Leaders Conference. Yes, and the reason why I've shifted this today is because um, it's going to be a practical thing. For through two, three days now, it has been practical and it is still practical up to now. For the sake of the Soul Leaders who are just coming back, once again, a very wonderful welcome to all of you. We hope your experience was beautiful. Some will be looking at me with side eye. We hope your experience was beautiful and we hope you can share with us your experience at the um, Cell Leaders Awards um, coming Sunday, this coming Sunday. But um, you can record a short video, it doesn't have to be live because there will be a lot of things going on at the time, okay? So please um, take notice of that, amen. So um we are going to be recapping for the sake of those who were not here on the um for the sake of those who were not here yesterday and then the day before yesterday hallelujah so today is practical with that being said let's move over to the board and then i'll um recap for you very quickly the cell ministry cell leaders um, conference from day one to day two and they will continue with today and learn a little bit more hallelujah all right so now welcome back so i'm going to recap him from you from day one which was the 19th of the Soul leaders conference so that's clc 2023 day number one this was on the 19th 2023 okay so on that first day i taught concerning can you show me the uh, uh, other screen thank you after that then we can come here so on that day i talked about the hierarchy of the solidness conference and the position of where it actually is okay so we have first of all the main church we have the main church and this main church here is the headquarters which is in Accra here and then after the main church we also have the uh, main church and the main church is headed by the head pastor so take notice of that okay and then after that then from the main church then we come to the um, main church again which is this time the branches Yes, so the main church, which is the branches, and then this is also headed by the branch pastor. That's it. Okay, so after this, we also have the um, assistant church pastors, then we have the cell ministry, and then we have the members. Okay. Sorry, I said assistant. Associating church pastors. And this one I explained it. I said they can be in both places. And then finally, we have the cell ministry. And we have the members. 
Okay, so here is it. First of all, you realize that this is the first thing, come on. Now, um, with this one, I explained to you that the associating church pastors, we have some, we can have some here, we can also have some here. They all partake of both main church and then the main church, that is the HQ and then the branch. And I explained to you that um, the um, cell ministry is actually second in command. And when it comes to the cell ministry, the reason why it's second in command is that when all these people are not there, for example, for example, uh, for example, I can call a conference and I can say that all pastors and main church people should be there. So the branch pastor will not be there, associating church pastors will not be there. So that would mean the cell ministry is the next in command. But if they are all there, it is it goes in this order. Do you understand? So this is the hierarchy of where the cell ministry is placed in the Love Arena Church. Hallelujah. So that's the first thing that I shared with you on that day. Today is going to be a huge recap. Because even that day, the time, the amount of time I spent on it, it wasn't small. And then um, I now explain to you the uh, cell, the structure of a cell. So we have the cell itself, in itself. Then we have the center we have the center, okay, and then after the center, oh, yes, and then we have the church. Sorry, I thought I labeled it wrong. Okay, so we have the cell, the center, and the church. Now, what is a cell? Um, did I define it somewhere? I gave a definition of the cell. And I told you that, yes, a cell is an organ of the church that represents and helps the growth of the church. The same way we have cells in our body that helps our growth, for example, like hormones and other things like that. That is the same way the cell works in the ministry or in the, um, the phase of the ministry. So, for example, the, the structure of the cell uh, is required to have three or more people. All right, three or more people. So that is three or more people, and at this stage, it is a cell. So when you have three or more people, it's a cell. That is for the Love Arena Church. I'm not talking about generally. And then for the center, we have ten or more people. All right, ten or more participants or ten or more people. And then once after you've been able to supersede that, then you become a church that is 20 or more people. So imagine you've gathered 500 people. You are more than a church. You are a mega church. <laughs> but just say now at these levels there's something special very here so this is the uh, structure of the cell okay a cell is an, a changing thing it grows then it goes out to even represent more so this is a cell every church in the lab arena church starts as a cell so when we started here we started as a cell do you understand what i'm saying or are you here or you go home so we started as a cell and I'm saying that as we started as a cell, it's the same thing that is here. So when we, we have the cell ministry here, when we create the cell, it's this, then this, then this. So it grows. So after a cell, then it now grows bigger, and then it grows bigger. And then at this stage, what is it meant to do? It's meant to also do the same thing that it was allowed to do at the first beginning. And at these stages, I told you that they have their various caretakers. All right? So... For the church, we have the branch pastor. In this case, and after the branch pastor for the cell, cell, uh, center, we have the um, LA center leaders. And then for the cell, we have what? Cell leaders. But when we call conferences like this, Cell leaders, LA center leaders, branch pastors, all of them are meant to be present. Okay, so so we have the cell leaders. I think move. I want this a bit moved here so that if I want to sit, I'll push it back. I can stand here and then show me. But I feel like I'm drawing a shadow on the thing. So we have cell leaders and they are in charge of the cell. And I explained to you that some leaders are the people that are in charge of a cell in an associating church or in the lab arena church, whichever one you want to take it as. So they are in charge of the cell and um, they have three or more people that makes them a cell and that gives them a cell leader. So the three or more people must be different people. Don't add the cell. This is what I didn't see on the first day. Don't add the cell leader to the three to make three. No. 
the pe the solid is power, but you see with the solid when it comes to the realm of the spirit, the solid is exempted from it because he has decided he or she has decided to represent himself as a cell leader therefore exempting him or changing his rank amongst the brethren so now it becomes the cell leaders to the cell the center l a center leader to the center and then the branch pastor to the church hallelujah so i think that that arena church of wasi can actually be a center instead of a church so with this uh, particular structure, that is it. Now, there's something very beautiful here. When it gets to the center stage, you have one ability as a love arena participant. And this is that um, you can create cells under the center. Realize that it was a cell before, but now as it is, it has grown and become a center, you can also allow cell creation over here. Sorry, it wasn't allowed over here. I just remembered. There's something called cell creation when it gets to this stage of a center and there's also something called cell creation with a, when it gets to the stage of the church now at the center stage it is not allowed because it needs more growth of people and yes sir if you decide to divide the center into various cells and other things of that sort people will start to conflict themselves have different ideas and many things of that sort and before you know your cell members or your cell people that you gathered may go astray and that is not what you want at the end of the day hallelujah so take notice of this amen so cell creation is allowed at this stage when the cell finally grows into a church but center uh, for cell creation is out so you don't create cells at that stage but church you create at that stage is that understood all right so that's going that's the cell structure this was all day one Yes, and I'm trying to recap for you. So that's the structure of the cell. That's the hierarchy of the cell. And, um, hey, uh, okay. So, yes, and then we went to day two. That was, yes, I recap for you. So this was, um, the responsibilities of a cell leader. After I explain all this hierarchy and this thing, I now explain the responsibilities of a cell leader. So this, oh, sorry, this is still day one, okay? And then I said responsibilities of a cell leader. Okay, the first responsibility. The first responsibility, I think today I'll be closing early. But the first... <laughs> I said this thing, people don't trust me. The first responsibility of a cell leader, that's responsibility one, is to represent the church. I'll just write them down, then I'll explain them, and then we'll move on with today's session. Um, yesterday, so I explained something, I'll recap from there, and then we'll move on to today's session, which is responsibility seven. Because there are seven key responsibilities, there are more. In the coming years, I will state them to you in the uh, Cell Leaders Conference because it is not yet to change from this wonderful trend. I love this type of teaching. Then responsibility two, you have to be up to date. You have to be up to date with all events. Events, and I stated the type we have type of events in the love arena church we have the zonal we have the international and we have the global some of the international and global what's the difference they are both the same by in our ministry we are multi-purpose we don't get for girl barracks responsibility number three Responsible for event organization. Abba, kilo H day. Okay, so responsible for event organization. I hope this one isn't too light for you to see because I want everybody to get a clear image of what. Okay, it's not that light. 
I'll just dip in my hand a bit. And then we have responsibility number four. Hey, don't start your thing over here. Responsibility number four. Stand in the place of pastors. Yes. And then responsibility number five, I then said that a meeting Okay, I know my handwriting is a bit cursive, but allow me to explain what I've written. So here are the responsibilities of a cell leader. Number one, or responsibility number one, we have to represent the church. So the first responsibility of a cell leader is to represent the church. Alright, when you go out as a cell leader, there's one aim that you are going for. And it is for you to go and represent the church as a whole, depending on the teachings the preachings and everything that has been taught to you, you are going out to represent the church as a whole and to represent God and the teachings that God has given to you through the man of God that you have. Is that alright? Then we have responsibility number two. We are to be up to date with all events. There are some of the solid leaders. If you ask them what we are currently doing now, it becomes a super story. I'm telling you. It becomes a whole different dimension on its own. You must be up to date with all events. And I'm saying they are zonal, they are international, and they are global events. So these are the type of events. Zonal events are the type of events where I'll say that every church and every center, every cell should have their own edition of the events during our happening of the, our own. Do you understand? So this one, it can conflict. But you must be up to date whether, when it comes to zonal. But when it comes to international and global, most at times it is required that the people join the conference at the exact happening and timing of the conference. So in global service like this, you have to be up to date with the dates and then um, know them and so that you can organize things well. It's a responsibility for, uh, another responsibility of a leader is to be responsible for event organization. So when I say event organization, I mean when you're organizing events in your branch, in the headquarters here, when you're organizing events anywhere, eh, you must be responsible for event organization. When it comes to event organization, you need to know how to organize it very well. Because you are responsible for that as a cell leader. This is the type of way that you take upon you when you say you become a cell leader. Now that you're a cell leader, can you know that after this cell ministry conference, Everybody has the opportunity to speak now or forever hold your place if you want to continue your ministry as a cell leader in the Love Arena Church. If these things are too plenty for you, then you can always speak now or you can forever hold your peace. Okay. Hey, okay. okay. So we uh, you need to be responsible for event organization. And this means that whenever you are organizing an event, and you must be included. If your branch pastor says that we are having this event at this season and this time, then it's because of your responsibility to be up to date with all events. You tell a pastor that, oh, we have global service at this time and this time, and it must not conflict like that. So we can put it like this and do that. And you organize the events. Hallelujah. So that's it. Then responsibility number four, you are to stand in the place of pastor. I told you that there will come a time, the hierarchy that I showed you of the pastors and everybody, there will come a time I will call everybody to a meeting, all the pastors, because there may, there may be certain information that will come to me that I cannot release to you generally as a church like that. It will have to pass through your pastors before it can actually get to you the way it's meant to get to you. Hallelujah. There are certain things don't just open a mouth and say, buy like that. No. 
we take our time before we say it. So it's not everything that we usually say like that. At times we call out the associating pastors, the branch pastors, the center leaders, and everybody. And when that happens, it's not like we exempt the cell ministry. But that is why the cell ministry is present to help to stand in the place of the pastor. So it shouldn't, and this leads me to the next one. Responsibility number five. Since you are standing in the place of a pastor, a meeting, a responsibility of a cell leader is that a meeting held by the HQ or a branch should never be cancelled on your watch. And here is what I explained to you yesterday. And that is where I'll bring to you day number two recap. Hallelujah. So that's what I'll bring to you day number two recap. So um, I said that a meeting held by the HQ or branch should never be cancelled because you are there. If you are there, you are responsible for the event organization and everything of that sort. So you have to sign the place of the pastor. You, got, you, are, you, are, you have to preach. You should have the ability to preach as a soul leader. You should never exempt yourself from such things. Why you escape? Why you run into? Anyways, so that brings me to the next recap. That is CLC day number two, which is 20th of um, yesterday. That is 20th. Of December 2023. Today is 21st. So, page. All right. Okay, I think. Uh huh, that's better. So, that's CLC day two. So, that's where I will take you to the next segment of the um meeting and this is clc day number two this is where we are going and i explained to you why a meeting okay He's not writing that will come and finish me over here. So, why a meeting should never be cancelled on a cell leader's watch? First of all, every event is done according to time. And this timing comes from the Holy Spirit. I explained it to you yesterday. That whenever we call an event, especially once in a lifetime event, they are very special events or they are events that are of great importance. Because of this, okay, so because of this, okay, because of all these events, that comes once in a time according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, there is like a cloud that suspends upon them, that supports or backs the events. So I'll explain it to you just like that yesterday, and I'll go very quickly. So, take this as though this is a weekly service. This is, we can call this midweek service. Okay? So, we can call this midweek service. Now, in this midweek service, there is every week. Note that midweek service is what? Weekly. So, it's every week. Now, I explained something to you yesterday that despite that it is every week and it is the same name that is there, it always carries different content. The message is different, and so is what the, so is what the service carries. And when, when I say what the service carries, I'll help you understand. With every service, it carries a certain um, feature. So in a service, you can realize that there is grace, there is favor, what else is there? There is mercy. Okay, and then there is blessing there is breakthrough and many other things of that sort okay so when this happens the, these are the things that we are having in the service so let's say week number one and then this is august 20th 23 okay so that's the date and here is the service now i'm telling you something or i want you to notice something here 
for the same service okay the same service we can have it here as well the same the same midweek service you can have it here oh we can have it here the same way but it will carry a different feature maybe shift back a bit for me aha uh -huh. so in this service is the same midweek service different week this is what week two so in this week two that's also another date okay so we have what in the service impartation same service different week different content we have the impartation we have prophecy hey why do i keep doing that prophecy we have grace and this time is abundance grace hundredfold grace we have favor that's times two again and then we have what wait i write it blessings okay okay so same week different service now you ask yourself why is it that it is the same midweek service but it is carrying different content because we don't preach the same message every week the message changes and so as the message changes it changes according to the timing this is the reason why it changes so every service comes with a special thing that is abundance and so at times you realize that certain midweek services they are very very powerful and some are you know neutral some are also not as the best or not best as we expected so i'm saying that we one like this as we had the com uh, we had the midweek service there was supposed to be grace breakthrough favor blessing and mercy and maybe this same service okay this same service all these things were meant to be there let me show uh, when you go to the book of ecclesiastes chapter 11 if i'm correct in the verse number three it says if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth so once you call for midweek service which is a weekly event the cloud of that midweek service suspends in the air and god is ready to pour down all that you are uh, supposed to come in the service now here's what happens there are certain group of people that cell leaders will bring in or that you as a leader will bring in that is coming for grace so maybe you say that oh i want god to bless me this is blessing in that service and he's going to receive it because of his faith but he doesn't know that because this is a very very deep thing that i'm sharing with you it's not play i'm very serious at times i watch the things i teach and i'm like hey anyway so as I'm saying, someone may come, I want a breakthrough in my finance, I want breakthrough in this, breakthrough in that, okay. So, you can have all these people once again. So, maybe grace, I told you that maybe five people may be coming to receive grace from God. Favor, we have ten. Breakthrough, we have ten, uh, five. Mercy, we have ten. And then blessing, we have fifteen people. When you add all these numbers together, these are new members that are permanently coming to stay because of what they received in this one service because of the things that were in the cloud of the service that were meant to pour down upon them so that is why i refer to you i refer to you if uh, ecclesiastes don't go there chapter 11 and the verse number three that says if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth so this is the same exact thing this is the same exact picture now when you as a cell leader you watch a, 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 a meeting like this to be cancelled okay you're trying to say maybe um what light off okay there's no lights or oh, pastor is not there so midweek service and cannot go on i gave you a practical example that somebody has showed me the other day and never showed up maybe there was a, a cloud suspending in fact there was a cloud suspending filled up with things that they were going to receive but because the person i was not available at the time and the person also assured and declined all these things went to waste so if you are sorry that you watch that to happen everything of all of these things they are pointless everything here 
become zero. Wait, but oh, oh yes, that is the truth. When you allow events to be cancelled, wait. Till. So maybe the person coming for grace isn't coming. Maybe the person coming here was meant to be a permanent mem member and would come next week. By then, their faith would have been stirred up over here. But it was it was cancelled, so the person couldn't come. So now that they are coming to receive double grace, do you think that they will now stay in the church permanently? No, it's not developing. They would have developed there once they saw the sign first. But if they are now coming to learn it here, it will be as effective. I don't know if you are getting what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that maybe, yeah, let's say that AC was it was coming purposely for grace and was brought by a cell leader. I told you that when it comes to um, cells, cells have the cell leaders and then their cell members. The cell members can be assigned to you by your branch pastor or the uh, headquarters or you can bring them in yourself. It's open source. So as I was saying, AC, you went to outreach and then you invited AC or yes, you invited AC to church and AC says I'll come. AC is hoping for a certain grace to come upon her life. Alright, so now she's coming to this service. Now when she comes here, had this service been done, the grace would have gone to her because of her faith. And she would have said that, wow, I'm going to continue coming. Not knowing that next week there was going to be grace double. So now it will give her testimonies. So now she will continue to come every time. But if she didn't come here and she's now coming here, she will see double of it, yes. But she will not really understand why it is. Because there's a, there's a certain development that happens here that also happens here. So you realize that this week doesn't contain what this week has. Breakthrough isn't in this week. It's not that God does not do it all, but every week is designated for something special. Every event. So as a son leader, never watch any event because you are sending people away. You are depriving people of their right according to the kingdom of God. They are meant to come to an event, but you are depriving them of their right because you allow the event to be cancelled. And it shouldn't be so. Don't allow event to be cancelled or your watch as a cell leader from today. Because you're depriving people. If you want more clarity on this, go to the next, like go to the previous day after this conference. Or you can wait for the message because it has been edited. It's only left with upload, then we give it to you. So you can wait for the message to come. It's quite long. It's like um, an hour and 57 minutes, almost two hours. So you can understand that. How many minutes has it been? And I'm here 33 minutes now. I understand why we prolonged yesterday. We, so week two, I'm saying that, for example, impartation. So this service happens. Maybe impartation, 50 people are coming to receive impartation. To go and send out to people. Maybe to heal or to do whatever. Prophecy, maybe there are people who want to prophesy. Or the person prophesy to them. Maybe there are also five over here. Grace. Four people are coming, blessing, ten, and then favor, two. Now, because you've learned this principle and this service is happening, you have earned permanent members through this service. And they are here to stay, and they will continue coming. Because every service has a certain cloud that suspends, that holds about everything you can ever think of. So when you see the Holy Spirit manifesting itself in certain services, you should know that there's a special service. There's a cloud. There's a presence that is there that allows these things to happen. I'm just using the cloud as an example. Hallelujah. But if you want biblical reference, just go to Ephesians chapter 11 and then verse number 3. Same likely, okay, with special events. And I told you that every event is very paramount. That there are certain events, if you use it, if you hear it, nothing should, apart from this, what, what else should in, inspire you to, oh, I mean, it shouldn't be even a topic of matter. Let's say, for example, as I used yesterday, we are having a service called the Healing Sunday Experience. 
okay we are having the healing sandy experience then again another cloud is created once this cloud is sharp but anyway once this cloud is created this is the cloud for the event so here is the thing obviously the main thing or one of the thing that a babu or inside events healing obviously one of the main things in the event to be healing and this healing will be in every aspect and i explained to you healing fam in the family family problems healing in the family and then we have healing in life healing in hell healing in finance all right because you can be financially sick i'm telling you what else is here i can't yes progress healing in your business healing in your job and did i add anything Did I add in it in my house? And then someone may also be coming for testimonies, which is not contrary to that. But I mean, everything can be received through faith. And then maybe some are also coming to receive impartation. Once again, now this event is coming with a lot of things. This event is coming with a lot of things. It's coming with healing for business, job, testimonies. I mean, so many things. And maybe let's say that the location of this is the Independence Square of Accra. So this is the is happening at the Independence Square. Okay. So as this event is going to happen now. Maybe you may say that, oh, um, if from this event, you can get a lot of people. Like, let's say, let me use, you can get that many people from this service. So many of them tuning in online, on site, here, there. Now, if you have, listen, with this type of event, let's say that, oh, uh, we are having it at the Independence Square. Note that apart from this, money is also something that has been gone or put into the event. Time, efforts, and all these things are factors or things that have been put into the um, that have been put into the uh, the event. So when you have these things happening, maybe. Is happening in week 101 of 151. Okay, so it's happening in week 101 of 151, and then the day is finally here. We go to the independence square, and some some are saying that um there is no light or, or something. Listen, Jesus Christ, did, Jesus Christ did not use light to do his church, but Obviously, the situation will arise with all the speakers and other things. How are people supposed to hear? How are people supposed to do this? How are people supposed to do that? The event should not fail no matter what. Everything possible must be done to prevent that this event from failing. Especially every event. I'm not talking about only when you see healing or whatever. I gave a specific words yesterday. And I told you that even those words, Krano, they shouldn't you shouldn't see them before you should say that you are having a... Um, uh, some sense of care for the events. No, it shouldn't be so. Every event is necessary. Now, for example, I explained something very funny yesterday. And I said that, look, people, in this case, when they say, so obviously, leaders will sit down, the pastor will sit down. Then now that there's no light, let me just present an example of a problem. Now that there's no light, what do we do? And pastor, let's cancel the event and postpone it now. 
And some will say, no, which are the right people who want to sustain the grace and the cloud that is available for this event. So some will say, Pastor, no, we are not meant to cancel it. Then some will also be saying, let's cancel it. So here in the cell or in the cell, in the midst of the cell leaders, you divide yourself. So those who say that, oh, you want, um, those who say that, oh, uh, they want the event to continue. Now they are here. Okay. Those who say they don't want the event to continue, that it should be cancelled, they are here. Gradually, you realize that you will fight and uh, you will draw an arc here. You will draw another arc here. Then you have cancelled the event, just like that. A shake zero. Now, I told you that when you cancel such events, or always when you allow events to be cancelled, it lessens the testimonies that are supposed to be in the church. So, the church loses prosperity in these particular areas or places. So once you cancel such events like this, and it's recurrent in the church, you lose prosperity in what? This thing is not clear at all. Yes. You lose prosperity in fellowship. That's what I can see there. I may have said a few things yesterday. I, I'm looking from a video, so I can't really see what is there because it's quite blurry. And then um, you can lose prosperity in fellowship, so winning. Uh, you can lose prosperity in these things. You can also lose prosperity in. Boy, I wish I could see what I've written over there, but I can't. I can't come and stress my eyes like that. I'm wearing glasses, but people. No. So you can lose after you cancel these events like this and it's recurrent in the church. You lose prosperity in the fellowship and so winning. I gave more examples yesterday. Because people will be like, oh, that is it will always they are canceling the events. Who knows this week crowd they will cancel the midweek service. Let's not take them serious. Let's pass somewhere and go join. And they'll not even regard the church because always they are recurrent in canceling the event. So as a cell leader from today, let us stop. Don't allow events to be cancelled like that. It prevents the, the growth of the church in every manner in every way. Amen. This was day two. And then I explained to you a few things again in day, day number two. I'm still recapping. You know, I've not started for today. But honestly, today I don't really have much to say. So this, it's actually good that I'm actually recapping at this moment in time. In time. Okay. Now, back to the main thing. The responsibilities of a cell leader. A cell leader is responsibility number six. To be responsible for order in the church. That's R6. Okay, so this is responsibility number six. I said to be responsible for other in the church. I said, so leader, it's very important for you to be responsible for the other in the church. And I told you that in this aspect, it depends on the context in which the other is being used. We have types of order when it comes here. We have command. We have command. We have conduct. We have event list. And then we have event order of service. For those who are taking notes currently, please, as I'm, I'm saying, this has already happened, so you can go back and watch the previous sessions. But if you if you don't want to suffer the pain of scrolling to look for the uh, time, because there were a lot of uh, breaks in the this one, the stream. 
so if you don't want to go through all of that i just suggest that you wait for you to get the notes and then you listen to the messages amen so the command as i'm saying a command can be given when the command is given it's your responsibility that that command has been put in order and it's working so you should make sure that as a solid that that command is still active and working but commands will be given from the top and it will be taken lightly and it shouldn't be so as a solid that you should stand your ground now code of conduct or mode of conduct whichever one you want to call it when it comes to conduct there are lots of things that happen in church okay there are times where rumors will run about your pastor in your in the church too. in the church it can literally happen in the church as a solid that you have the right to question why the conduct is like that towards the pastor whenever the pastor is being spotted in and in the audience or in the church or something because maybe you may realize that always some people are talking about pastor that he did this that he did that and stuff like that you have a responsibility as a solid leader to correct that person and to ask that person that's that uh, to ask that person why he or she is doing or talking like that because conduct you listen you cannot control the behavior of somebody but in terms of speech when it comes to the church phase is very different because that's the same thing that you say that you influence the people to just leave it happens go for more explanation from the yesterday's video for this because it's a huge thing and then i told you event lists yes event lists can come out from the headquarters as well generally for um at times we don't even do event lists we do okay we do but when we present it to you it doesn't mean that you are also not um able to have your church services or your conferences as the leading of the holy spirit you're allowed to so if we present it as the main hq or we present it at the church and then it happens that you also have an event at the time you can present your event list as a solid that to your branch pastor or the pastor and say that oh pastor said um you see this event that you wanted to happen it's going to conflict to this one in the um, headquarters event list so i believe we should shift it here and it should fit here and i believe it will be okay you can present it to your pastor if your pastor approves of it okay but if he doesn't it doesn't mean that the pastor doesn't like the work that you did it just means that um it wasn't meeting up to expectations so that's why i said to you yesterday that do it very well event order of service every service should not be the same order at least small change must come and these things must be done by the cell leaders okay so the order of service we must make sure that's why when you look at this church very well we have two sections we have the first one which is the christ embassy section and then we have the other one which is from us we have some that is from first love like we have been divided into so many sections in the church hallelujah so um order of service you realize that when we are the same way we do prophetic encounter service it's not the same way we have global communion service do you have you realized that the same way we start our regular conferences or the way we start the not by might or, or by power conference is not the same way we have started this conference it's different do you understand so all of these things you can order them and then you can present them to your pastor for approval if the pastor approves that means you've done a good job as a cell leader hallelujah today is day number three hallelujah finally finally somebody say finally 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 at last long it took me 49 minutes to recap what we've done in three days praise the lord with less information if i say i was really saying everything i practically said that day oh like we'll, we'll be here for three hours plus talking i've done it before and who I did it with is none of your business. Day number three. 21st of 21st of December 2023. This is the Cell Leaders Conference. And this is the three grand finale. Welcome. We are still on the responsibilities of a cell leader. So, the responsibilities of a cell leader.
so this is the last one then i'll move to a different segment which will close the cell ministry week cell leaders meeting today responsibility number seven that's r7 okay I'm writing it from the spirit, so give me some time. I'm trying to put it in words. <laughs> hey! Not again. Ne eh say not again. 8 p.m. has come and meet us here. Without, with that being said, this is what we are dealing with today. This is the last responsibility of a cell leader. And it is that a cell leader should be available, dependable, and trustworthy. That a cell leader should be available, dependable, and trustworthy. Listen, there will be a pastor's conference too. Okay? There will be a pastor's conference too. This next year, actually. Because the timing is short. With what I'm seeing. I even told you that watch out for Healing Jesus Nations campaign. But with what I'm seeing... With the way things are flowing in left, right, and scanter, it won't, it won't work. So see you next year. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm saying the responsibility number seven that a solid that should be available, dependable, and trustworthy. What do I mean by this? When we say available, you must always be there to work. Okay, you must always be there to to do things that you are required to do. In other words, to exercise your um, your responsibilities as a cell leader. Because, like I'm saying, a cell leader is like an appointment for you to be upgraded to being a pastor. Because gradually, as time goes on, with the cell leadership, you realize that the cell evolves. Okay? You realize that the cell, or uh, yes, it evolves. So it goes from the cell... To the church to the center and then it now goes to the church so it evolves and this and we realize that the leaders don't see the same we are all i I'll, I'll always say that we are all cell leaders i'm a cell leader and you are also a cell leader we are all cell leaders we all started from cell hallelujah even when you come to t- uh, terms of science we all started from a cell we were a cell and a man's a dot Eh? We all started from a cell. So you realize that as the cell evolves, the leaders change. And so do you. So at this stage, learn this. So that when you evolve now, it becomes a different thing for you. I'm speaking to everybody here. You must be available to exercise your responsibilities. You should never be found... Every day we are looking for this guy. Where is this guy? Why why is he always missing? Why is he always lost? He always will bring about stories about you that are not even true. Availability is very paramount in the cell ministry. Because some ministry are always meant to be doing something. Planning events, doing this, doing that. And some of the cell leaders cry when you go to Christ Embassy. Some of them are peers for the pastors. So just imagine all these responsibilities. If a, 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 a cell leader is coming from Christ Embassy to explain this to us, it will end at 7. It will end at 25 to 40. Yes, because they have a lot of responsibilities. Especially when you go into the big, big churches. The zonal ones or the, the branches. They have zonal churches. They have branches. They have the, um, zonal or regional churches. Okay. The zonal church is for 
a certain region or a certain group of people. So when a meeting is being called and it is so now, everybody is going to go there. So that's how they also do this over there. And they are all available. When you go into such churches, for example, walk into Christ Embassy, um, Accra, Ghana Zone. The one at Shiashi, Love World Arena, Accra, LAA. Walk there and go and see. Some leaders are always active doing things. Some leaders are always open-eyed, doing things. With what has happened there, I think I should share the last one. Responsibility number eight. Oh boy. Oh yes. This is also a very important point. So as I'm saying, you must be available. Miko, forgive me, I'm tired. The past few days I've been standing, sir. So my heels are paining me. Um, so I'm saying, a sound leader must be available, dependable, and trustworthy. So, available, you must always be found. Like, when you, we need you for something, you must be found. I'm not saying that you must always be found doing something, though. That's a different thing altogether. But I'm, I'm saying that you must always be found. Okay, you must always be available when you are needed because a cell leader can be selected at any time to do anything. Okay, so that's another thing. Dependable, meaning that somebody we can fall on. That's where the pastor thing comes in. And I shared with you a story on the one who said day two. So I just go and listen to those ones. Then you understand the dependable that I mean. But when I say dependable, I mean someone that can depend on. Because out of all the cell leaders, I can select one that will oversee all the cell leaders. Not that the rest of the cell leaders are useless, so, but because the cell leader is showing a certain overdose of their responsibilities, that helps me or gives me the conscience to trust them with even more. Do you understand? Yes. So that's also another thing. Then we have respons- um, trustworthy. Somebody we can trust that, okay, you remain there. You will be there. When we need you, you will be available. Okay? That is another thing too. And then, the next one, that's responsibility number eight. That a cell leader must learn how to sacrifice. This one I've gotten now. Sacrifice is part of a cell leader's life. It has always been part, shall never live, will never live, can never live for anything whatsoever. Sacrifice has always been part of a solid this life. It can't ever live. Uh, because we leaders, main leaders of the main church, or the main churches or branch churches, we also sacrifice a lot. The amount of hours I sacrifice in ministry if I was sacrificing in growing my job, ah, tell me something. Wouldn't I have built a house by now? That was isn't a house expensive, but yeah, you don't know what I'm learning. So you don't know how much impact it can bring in terms of work. Have you seen my design before? <laughs> Anyways, that is just by the way. But I'm just saying that a solid leader must learn how to sacrifice. So when I say sacrifice, sacrifice literally in everything. Jesus Christ has sacrificed for all of us. But even him could not do all. That's why he left it for us to come and do. To come and continue. And continue to sacrifice. In order to make the work of Christ work efficiently, you must learn the act of sacrifice. Is that clear? All I'm trying to say is that sacrifice is one thing that is part of us. In order to receive of the blessings of Christ and for God to listen to us, we must be holy. Okay? We must be holy. 
We must give ourselves in. We must be holy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have sacrificed all the things in the world which we think are good. But the Bible tells us that they are not good. So we sacrifice. It's a choice. When you want to sacrifice something, it's a choice. When you want to sacrifice your life for the betterment of somebody's life, that is a mother's choice. Because a mother can look at a lad. Should I go and put this child in adoption? And just better my life and focus on myself, I should sacrifice my life and make my child better. So that when my child grows, I can reap the fruits of the labor, of the sacrifice that I sacrifice. It is like a farmer who will go to a farm, plant seeds, and reap harvest. That is how it is. Because the farmer sacrificed to bend his back, to put the seeds in the ground, to water them. To rake all the weeds from there, to spray it with insecticide, and to wait for it to grow. They are all sacrifices. Because he knows that if he says that he is being delicate about his back, he's not going to eat. He will end up eating his back. You end up eating his back. We must all sacrifice. I am doing all these things. I am sacrificing. The fact that I'm here is a sacrifice. Yes, it is. The fact that I'm here is a sacrifice. Because, just listen, how many amount or how, mm -hmm, it has finished. How many people, I'm, I'm just, that was what I wanted to say. How many people would actually sacrifice their time? A young person like me, look at how nice I am. Just be honest with yourself. Am I not nice? I'm not flattering myself. Oh. God's creation is beautiful. I am part of God's creation. Am I not beautiful? You are also beautiful. So acknowledge that. Okay? It's not pride. I'm just giving an example that I'm God's creation. So are you. And I have an age. <laughs> Some still don't believe my age that at this at this age I'm able to do these things and able to do it effectively and efficiently. And my ministry of teaching never fails or goes down. Yeah. Uh, to be before I even continue, to be honest, I cry is very hot. Ah. Hamatan is here, you know, the heat is superseding the Hamatan. Anyways, that was just by the way. But I'm just saying that a young person like me, ask yourself, why should I be doing this? Isn't it usually old men or people who have grown who usually preach the word of God? So why me? It's a sacrifice. Because of an eternal gift or result that I'm going to receive. Because of the sacrifice, always there must be an outcome. When you sacrifice a chicken for Christmas, the result must be chicken, fried chicken. Is that not so? Exactly. So when you sacrifice over here, there must be a result. So you don't just learn how to sacrifice. You learn how to sacrifice with timing according to the spirits. You learn how to sacrifice when it is necessary to sacrifice. Because you don't just get up and just start sacrificing anything. You sacrifice with timing of the Holy Spirit. That's how you sacrifice. Do you understand where I'm coming from? That's how you sacrifice. The timing of the Holy Spirit. God, you know automatically that maybe this event that is coming, Maybe past your branch pastor, or I will say this event that is coming, let's make it beautiful. Let's all sponsor and support. There will be certain events that are there. You just cannot ignore the fact that you, you need to sponsor. You just look at the event to say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am about to sacrifice my money, everything, into these events. As I'm sacrificing, may I reap bountifully. And you will see that sacrifice. 
if it is really God that is giving you that conviction in your heart, that sacrifice, come on, what will the Lord do for you? Once you learn this principle, there's nothing that comes your way that you won't be able to handle. Look at all of you. The bees. You've gone to SHS. You've sacrificed your luxurious life for education. And today, here you are, you're crying. <laughs> oh. If, 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 you know, let me not go there, okay? Let me not go there tonight because of the sake of time and some of the people's data. All I want to say is that learn this principle, the principle of sacrifice. Okay? Yes, the principle of sacrifice. The principle of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Once you are able to learn this thing, there's nothing in your life that you won't be able to fight. For heck, you will not even fear anything. You will not even fear anything. Once you are able to learn how to sacrifice, there's nothing that you fear. Yes. Once you learn the principle of sacrificing, there is absolutely nothing that you are going to fear in your entire life. Unless you choose to fear. But sacrifice, genuinely, is meant to teach you how to be fearless. For example, let's say, me like this. With me, blood is one thing I don't like to see consistently. And you go and put me in front of a pig or a chicken. I should kill. Hey! And a pig now I check. You see? But once I'm able to gather the courage and the confidence to kill it, and I'm able to get used to that idea, that is the principle of sacrificing or killing animals as my field of work, it normalizes with me. So I don't fear anything. I don't fear blood again. It's, it's just the, I mean, do you, do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. So you must learn the principle of sacrifice and not, you will not be anything again. Especially to the SHS candidates who have come back today. As you have come back, learn the principle of sacrifice. Learn how to sacrifice things. Because the stories that I heard today, they are just downfounding we'll talk about more in the <clears throat> we'll talk about more in the coming days but all i just tell you is that learn the principle of sacrifice as a soul leader who is going to school you have sacrificed your luxurious life uh, is the same pink hey wow anyways you sacrifice your luxurious life for Education. Now, although you are going to study there, sacrifice also your education for the hearts of many who are not safe in your school. It's very important. The education is good. You can use it here. But once you get up there, your diplomas, degrees, Certificates, but we can say certificates, certificates, and every other thing is useless. Do the right thing, and what's eternal? Yes, I have learned the art of sacrifice. So at times, I sacrifice without even knowing it, but at the end of the day, it always turns to something good for me. That's why I'm telling you that sacrifice is by the, the also the timing of the Holy Spirit. So know the times and seasons as to when to sacrifice. With me, I have made moments. I've I've made mm -hmm, I've made mistakes in moments 
where I was not meant to sacrifice and actually sacrificed it. But God turned it around for me. I don't want you to make the same mistake. I want you to have a hundred percent fluent results. So just learn the seasons and time and then learn the principle of it. May God bless us all. Now, to the main reason or the last thing for this conference. Amen. I told you today I will close early. Am I early? Ah, okay. I'm a, I'm a bit early. Hey, no. <laughs> and then we are moving on to the last part. The oil of thy joy, or what I like to call the joy of it all. In other words, this, the joy of being a cell leader. So, where do I start from? Being a cell leader is just an experience. In fact, being a leader is just an experience, you know. You get to experience so many different things in life. You get to experience love, joy, and so many other things. So, the joy of it all is that One, the joy of it all is that gives an experience with experience comes wisdom. With wisdom comes knowledge. It gives an experience. That's number one. It gives an experience. Um, I've created something there. I said, with experience, once you have the experience from being a cell leader, once you have that experience, it gives you wisdom about certain things. So, for example, when you realize that, oh, as a, as a, a new cell leader has come in and then it's not like, you know, be able to do what they are meant to do. Then you come around, oh, dear brother, dear sister, I want to talk to you. I was once a cell leader like you. And then you can en enlighten them or, you know, tell them more about the knowledge that you have. It, 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 give, it will give you an experience. So really, the oil of thy joy is really the oil of thy joy of working for the Lord. It gives an experience. So that's number one. And when it gives you that experience, it will give you wisdom. So you will know that, oh, when you do it like this, rather, it, will, it is likely to work, but not 100%. Because of the experience that I have in ministry, I'm able to determine to you whether, sorry, whether something is likely to work concerning the cell ministry, concerning ministry or not. I'm able to determine because of the wisdom. Wisdom is not perfect. Okay? Wisdom is a shape shifter. With time, wisdom changes. Some wisdoms are there, they remain forever. But with time, they also change according to the season. This particular weather in uh, a Accra now. We have a matano, but it is not advisable to wear a sweater because you will sweat in that sweater. It is hot here. So you see, the wisdom of the whole thing is that when a matan comes, get warm, get moisturized. Even the I think the moisture is still in the air, but not as much as before. Okay. But even with that, all I'm saying is that you see, you, you say that it's cold, so get warm and get moisturized. So they get warm, dear. The warm you have it is beaming from the sun. So you see, the wisdom of the fact that gets warm 
it's not the same so even when you try to use that wisdom in this time in Accra, it won't work you will be hot and get moisturized it's still there and that one the wisdom doesn't change so get moisturized that's all so it's the same thing so wisdom changes so it gives an experience that's one and then the experience will give you wisdom and the wisdom will give you knowledge wise wisdom and knowledge are two different things when we say somebody is wise it means that <laughs> when we say somebody is wise it means that the person knows how to apply knowledge practically but when we say knowledge it is something that you have here or something that has been documented in a book documentation okay that is what it means so that's the difference between wisdom and knowledge is that okay all right um the next thing the oil of thy joy the joy of working for the lord so i mean think of some what are some of the wonderful things that you will see working for the lord apart from giving an experience no i don't do this thing it gives a story that's number two So, um, is this thing even visible? Dear Lord Jesus, anyways, I'm about to close. Now, there's a difference between an experience and a story. A story can be formulated, but a story is something that basically has happened and has been documented in, in, a, in a way, or has been noticed in a way, or a certain season. So, for example, the season of Christmas is a story about Jesus Christ being born, and this is taken from the Bible. But an experience of it is literally being there, knowing what was working and what was not working. But you are reading the written phase of it. Amen. Okay. So it gives a story. Now, I'm saying that some stories can serve as testimonies to others when shared. Okay. So this story, God will let you go. That's why when you, when you select yourself as a minister of God, or when you select yourself as a cell leader, one of the things you are always bound to see every day, every time, every hour, every, every, wherever you pass, one of the things you are always bound to see as a cell leader challenges, trials, tribulations, attacks, sickness, disease, financial issue, this, that. It gives a story. And one day, at the end of it all, when all is said and done, it, it will give you a result in a story. And this story you can share with a new cell leader and it will inspire them. You will be their inspiration. And it doesn't demote me in any way. It is a story that God has given to you, not me. So you can go ahead and share it to them. Sometimes I'm not the best person to look at. When you look at the scope of my life, I'm not the best person to look at. That's why I said that we are all selected for certain people. The way I will say something here, or the way I'm explaining this thing now, I can give it to somebody, explain the way I want to explain it to them. How they understand it and represent it is different. It's like, for example, let's take it as we are practically in a class. Okay, this is a conference. I'm just doing something practical for you. But let's take it as though we are in a class. 
I am teaching you, or I am your lecturer or teacher, or facilitator, according to GS syllabus now. Anyways, so I, um, now that I'm your facilitator, I may teach something. You will understand it the way I want you to understand it. But in certain scenarios, when it comes to when you are writing a test, you may not remember it exactly word for word. But you may, the student may uh, remember um, just a few bits of it that you said. But may not remember it word for word or exactly as um, said before. Despite the revision, the, the studies, frequent asking or solving of questions and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it, it can't stick, all right? A person's word cannot stick in your head like that. Jesus' words can, but a mortal man's words dealing with education cannot always stick. But there will be certain things that will just remain in your head. And then, how the student represents it on the paper is what becomes their understanding of what I represented. Are you confused? Okay, let me make it easy for you. I am teaching. Okay, I've explained this and this as this. The student understands. Now, when they go to the exam hall, they also have their way that they are going to explain it there that will tally with exactly the same thing that I said, but in a different manner. Because that is the mind of the student, and that is his uh, um, view or perspective of understanding. The brothel is brothel. -in. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that is it. The joy of it all is that it gives you a story, and it can serve as testimonies to Alex. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. So today, the title of the message is The Oil of Thy Joy. The Oil of Thy Joy. Hallelujah. So the reason why you'd be happy after all of this, and then the last one, number three, then we close. I'm, I'm sure some people are saying as long glass. This man has finally come to an end. Yes, we have. Fortunately, the... Hmm. Please. English is not for everyone. Fortunately and unfortunately, today, funny enough, I'm tired. I'm very tired. Okay, so it gives a story. There was something coming. And then the last one, which gives you the oil of thy joy, is that it serves as an accomplishment. Okay? The last one is that it serves as an accomplishment. Alright? So the last one, it serves as an accomplishment. After you've gone through years of cell ministry, you are now a pastor, a branch pastor, a zonal pastor, regional, whatever, it says it's an accomplishment. You want to look at it and you need to teach somebody. Obviously, you will not be given a certificate for it. Awards will be there, yes. But when I say accomplishment, I mean, I mean it literally as an accomplishment. For example, the way we have in the Bible whereby it says the only thing that you need to see at the end of the day is when Jesus will look up to you on that last day and say, Well done, good and faithful servant. There's a song in First Love like that. Um, I can't remember the lyrics very well, but I will just I can't I, I can only remember the last part of it. Says, um, "Can't wait to see your face and say I love you. Will you just smile and tell me, well done, good and faithful servant? 
There's no other friend like you, Jesus. Can't wait to see your face and say, I love you. Will you just smile and tell me, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. So when you get there on the last day, this should be your story, an accomplishment. But the Lord will say, well done, good and faithful servant, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. well done, good and faithful servant, yeah. That's the accomplishment. After all this, when all is said and done, after you have remembered your Creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days have not yet come, remember your Creator before the years come. When you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. So after all this, once you remember, you've remembered your Creator, it, the joy of it all, at the end of the day, is that it, it serves as an accomplishment. It will give you something to really talk about. You will stand out because of these things, I'm telling you. As you have attended these three days of the conference, I want you to know that your time has not been wasted for anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is the genuine truth. Your time has not been wasted. It gives an experience. It gives a story and it serves as an accomplishment. What more would you want apart from the Lord's approval? What more? There is nothing on the face of the earth that supersedes the Lord's approval. The approval of man is fake. The Lord's approval is the one we should seek. So, that is why I say that with me, I know the Lord has selected me to be a pastor. But everybody has their perspective. And with this perspective, it depends on how they look at things and how they approve of you. So be, most of the people don't approve of me as a pastor. Even my family, they just see me as somebody who is just doing the things of God. It's a perspective. When you go into strategic management and leadership, it's a course. We have something called a perspective or a lens. And this lens is a way you look at certain things in different manners or in different, yeah, different mannerisms. So you can look in a certain uh, at a certain situation in a way, at the same time look at it in this way, at the same time look at it in this way. It's a very wonderful thing. I never got the time to learn that. But that's all I got. And I believe I kept it until now, just for you to know this. So many don't approve of me as a pastor. And like I say, it is an opinion. You can have it. It is a perspective. It's yours. But that does is the Lord's approval. Really, that guarantees me and not your approval. Like I said, in your love arena, Bible school will not approve of you. If you are not anointed master, the baby da the ANC. If the Lord has not approved of you, where is it now? You can go to all the fancy Bible schools on the face of the earth. And you will still not have the same impact as the one who the Lord has approved. And has not even been to Bible school. The powerful ones are the ones that you will never hear that they've been to Bible school before. Pastor Chris, what say? Say, well, go Bible school be that. Bishop Doug, have you heard it before? They were selected by the Lord. So just think about it. Why are you going to Bible school? This is where I'll end. Please stand to your feet. This has been a wonderful time with you all. God bless, God bless you so much. Thank you so much for joining me for all these three days. Can you kindly stand to your feet?
as we conclude this glorious moment in time. Yesterday I was singing a song when we went on a short break. And I want us to sing it. It's, it's not the full thing, but let us sing the song to extol the name of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Wherever you are right now, I just want you to lift up your hands, begin to thank the Lord for such a glorious moment and season in time that He has given you to be here. He has done all that He can to preserve you. Lift up your hand and thank Him wherever you are. Yes, lift up your hand. Masala brand begin soli evista. Gambando shombre dege livenzo arabrashta fraka sombre elide zikeze. Balanja la brandi gestu evize kamuzungre abis salavrasta kamanza legre dira masungre de. Balanja la brandi lege sunte de vayi. O talavrashta la vi e negise kalamanzo lodo. You are good. You are kind. And you are great. Precious Jesus, what a great God you are. You are good, you are good, you are kind, and you are great. Precious Jesus, what a great God you are. You are good, you are good, you are kind, and you are great. Rest on Jesus, what a great God you are. Lift up your hands wherever you are, as a soul leader, as a attendee as a member participating in this conference lift up your hands wherever you are begin to speak to the lord begin to speak to him right now maka be solo on the level of chef like rasson gradi velimanzo against a la gesta man be zebra de goman jalabra les ombres di velimanze heavy a caste a maganzo rala shanda rigra gender regret the crest the crekele mazua Ye camus to faye ke mani a mise a mi castel a gestama. La risharu a livre costali fesende. Cabaya casonga diga de monza a bastali catea. Rabra da libo sola mans a la manza a legisende a gisendu. Father Lord who art in heaven, bless your children. Keep them, strengthen them for difficult times. Help them to know the principle of sacrifices. Any demon that supersedes. <coughs> Their life in upon the air or in the air on the land in the sea that I don't want them to go forward. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea in the name of Jesus Christ. Be thou cast onto the depths of be thou cast away from the brethren. Be thou cast away from them. From today, as a soul leader, as a member, I declare prosperity in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As you have learned these principles, may you not be the same ever again. May it be from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give the Lord a shout, a clap, wherever you are? And you may be seated in His glorious presence.